there's a condition called postpartum cardiomyopathy or peripartum cardiomyopathy. We use those two terms synonymously. And essentially, it is heart failure or an abnormal heart that is diagnosed within the construct of, of pregnancy and childbirth. So it's specifically, it's anyone who develops heart failure symptoms within the last month of pregnancy or within the first five months after pregnancy, we term that a postpartum cardiomyopathy. And is it like a common condition or is it rare? No, it, it's actually relatively uncommon. So I see it commonly because of the nature of what I do as an advanced heart failure cardiologist. Many of my patients have this condition, but if you look at all the women out there that are pregnant, it's relatively uncommon. So it's not something that most general practitioners are going to think about on a regular basis. And what, you know, what are the symptoms, the common symptoms of this? So the common, most common symptoms for any heart failure patient are going to be symptoms of congestion. And when I say congestion, I mean excess fluid or fluid retention. Uh, so patients get swollen, short of breath, abdominal distension, inability to finish meals, inability to lay flat, exertional intolerance. You know, someone who used to be able to walk up the flight of steps and have no problem, now they have to stop while they're walking up a flight of steps because they're so short of breath. So those things would all be very typical of congestive heart failure. The struggle with, with a postpartum or peripartum cardiomyopathy is that many pregnant women have those symptoms and it's just a symptom of the pregnancy. And so it is a challenge for many people to become diagnosed with this particularly in that last month or so of pregnancy. But once the baby is delivered, if those symptoms are persisting, uh, they, that should raise the index of suspicion for something being abnormal or pathologic. Yes, because she also, she mentioned that she had gone to her doctor and he did he wasn't able to diagnose her saying it was, you know, it's just her pregnancy. Yeah. Um, so is that something that is misdiagnosed? So at well, I, I don't want to say it's misdiagnosed because it's just, it's relatively uncommon and it's, it's just not necessarily thought of, you know, most women at some point in the pregnancy are going to be, have a little bit of swelling and some shortness of breath and some difficulty lying flat because of the uterus, the uteral enlargement. So all those things are kind of symptoms of pregnancy themselves, and they certainly can overlap with a postpartum cardiomyopathy. Um, so, you know, my opinion would be anyone that's having persistent symptoms that are suggestive of maybe it's something more than just the pregnancy, that's something that needs to be thought about. And is it something that, is it something that's curable? Is it treatable? Excellent condition? question. So all forms of cardiomyopathy, if diagnosed early enough, we can get them on excellent medical regimens and many times the heart becomes normal again. And so off, most often, um, or most commonly, when we diagnose this condition, the heart is weak. Uh, so it's not pumping normally. Uh, a normal ejection fraction, which is just a marker we use to quantify the strength of the heart, is going to be in the in range of 55 to 60 percent. And oftentimes, when we do diagnose a postpartum cardiomyopathy, the ejection fraction might be down in the 25 to 30 percent range, so about half of normal. We put these patients on meds and very commonly, almost as a rule, if the patient's taken the meds and we diagnose them early enough, we can strengthen that heart and we do an echocardiogram down the road and the heart's actually recovered significantly. And so that's the goal. Most patients, if they get diagnosed and treated early enough, they can get on the right medications and the heart strengthens. The other thing that becomes important is making a genetic diagnosis. So many of these patients we're learning now not only do they have the stress of the pregnancy, but they also have a underlying genetic abnormality. And it's that genetic abnormality that was the underlying substrate and the stress of the pregnancy is what actually made the heart get weak. And so if, if you're not referred to an advanced heart failure cardiologist or someone who's thinking about the genetics of this condition, you might not get the opportunity to do a genetic diagnosis. We're, uh, we're, we're making many genetic diagnoses. A Titan mutation in particular is one that we find that's very common. And that has implications not only for the mother or the patient, but also the child, because if it's a genetic diagnosis, the mother can potentially pass it on to the child too. And um, is that something that does happen, that you've seen happen where it's passed down? Yeah, yeah. Many cardiomyopathies that I see, particularly in patients with young ages, if you do a genetic screen or take a detailed family history, 
these patients will have family members that are affected as well. It's an autosomal dominant, meaning there is a 50% chance that if a, a parent has it, they can pass it on to a child. And um, is this something, so if a woman, um, you know, has this condition, has her child, gets better, is it recommended that sh she has another pregnancy? Will this affect her? So it, it, the rec recommended, recommended is, is an interesting word choice. So there's, there's risks, of course. So there's risks of uh, if a woman has a peripartum cardiomyopathy and the heart gets weak at the, the first child, there's certainly risk of a check, second child. And so what we do is we try to inform women of these risks to make sure that they're making informed decisions um, at the time of possible second child birth. You know, I, I would never say a woman could never have another child, but there's certainly elevated risk. And, you know, I know it's this month is heart month. So how can women or men, you know, how can they look out for themselves and, you know, how, what, like, what can they do to keep their heart healthy or, Great. you know, take care so of So the, the, the simple things actually do work. So balanced diet, regular exercise or physical activity, monitoring your weight, those things do work. You know, obesity is a risk factor for heart failure. High blood pressure is a, a risk factor for heart failure development. Um, so anything that we can control and modify to improve our overall health will decrease the risk of heart failure and increase our heart health. Um, and then beyond that, if, if you know, many, many times what I see is patients that have had symptoms for a significant amount of time before they seek medical attention. And so I see patients in the hospital and the emergency room that are very sick by the time they come to uh, medical attention. And so what I would urge patients to do, uh, if, they're, if someone's not feeling well and there's something that's clearly abnormal or your loved one tells you you're not breathing right, why are you so swollen? Why are you so short of breath? You can't even walk from the parking lot to the grocery store anymore. Something's wrong. When you hear those types of things, I do urge people to seek med medical attention because if we diagnose this in the early stage, almost always patients do very well over the long term. But if we diagnose it in a very late stage, those hospitalizations are much more complicated and it's much harder to get patients back to their baseline. Thank you, Dr. Howard. Is there anything that, you know, those are all my questions. Is there anything that I didn't ask that would be important for people to know about this condition? Um, I, I think I would say that, you know, Heart, congestive heart failure and uh, cardiomyopathies are, they're very common overall, not just peripartum cardiomyopathies, but cardiomyopathies in general. As we age, and sometimes even younger patients, they develop abnormal hearts, and many patients don't know where or how to find the right treatment. And what I want to urge the community to uh, uh, understand and appreciate is that we do have the right treatment here. There are many centers in Atlanta uh, that can treat heart failure patients in a way that is world-class. And that's really what we try to deliver here at Wellstar and my colleagues across the city do as well. We re really try to deliver world-class care for our heart failure patients. So if you're a heart failure patient out there and you're not sure if you're on the right medications, you're not really doing well, you're kind of in and out of the hospital and, and with a poor quality of life, make sure you find the right doctor because the right doctors are out there and, and the patients can and should do well. We have an obligation as a medical community to, to give our patients the high quality of care. And you know, if you just Google heart failure at, uh, cardiologist in Atlanta, many, many names will pop up. There is a specific discipline within cardiology that is specific to heart failure. And sometimes that's what a patient needs to do well, a heart failure specialist.